for tuning in to another fun episode with your favorite mask moms, Juliana. Hello. And Jennifer, <laughs> hello. Uh, this week we have Lori, who's MIA, as she enjoys life in Florida, where she is uh, extending her stay and extending and extending and extending. I don't think she's ever I going think home. Ever, would you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, are you kidding me? I haven't been home in a year and a half. <laughs> Touche. So we're basically saying I'm the only boring one. Thanks. <laughs> just not boring, just unfortunate. What else? What else? Anyway, <laughs> hopefully she will join us for next week's podcast episode. But in the meantime, thank you for tuning in. Definitely check us out on our Facebook group, Disney Planning and Chat by Mouska Moms. Um, to catch all of our live videos from Lori's adventures in theme parks and the resorts and Disney Springs and living the dream and the life. Today, we are going to do a fun thing. We are going to have a battle of the breakfast. Although it's not March yet, I feel like March Madness is in the air. And so we decided to do a fun March Madness style battle of the breakfast. So let's get ready to rumble. But before that, we need to discuss our cocktail, which, um, what is our cocktail of the week? Yeah, so <laughs> it should be a breakfast related cocktail, right? And I know that all of you were thinking, oh, uh, then we know those, those uh, mouse moms, especially the one whose names begin with J, they love a Bloody Mary. Am I lying? No, you're not. You're not. We love a Bloody Mary. Biggest disappointment I. of our last trip was that they don't do those cool Bloody Marys at Paddlefish. At Paddlefish. I know, that's true. I mean, granted, it was evening, but at breakfast, a Bloody Mary is fantastic. <laughs> so, um, but that's not what we're going to talk about. So now I bet you're thinking, well, then it's a mimosa, right? Leave them on the edge of their seats. It's that's not us. a mimosa, you guys. <laughs> Not a mimosa either. We are keeping you on your toes. So this one is a cocktail that, of course, I ordered when we had breakfast at Topolino's Terrace on our most recent trip. And it was a special. So I don't believe it's actually always on the Topolino's menu. But I think it was when Lori was just there as well. So it was there in October. And I think it was just recently. I think you just have to ask for it. I don't know what the, I'm sure they could write. It's not out of the ordinary. I don't think it's I don't, difficult. I don't know what the name is of it, but it's a coffee martini. It was so and good. I'm assuming it was like coffee and vodka and there was something a little special in it. And then they more special than the vodka. And there was like a, a there was something special in it, like maybe a Frangelico or a, a, it wasn't Kahlua. No. No, I have to say, it Jen, you it thought it Bailey? was delicious. So now I'm going to throw a little bit of a flag on you because you are always talking about- I know, about, the milky drinks. Yes, you like know. you won't drink a white Russian. I don't know why this one's different, but it was delicious. Because it comes in a martini glass and not in a- <laughs> Anyway, it was delicious. It was just the right it amount had like a little of coffee sweet. bean on it. I love the coffee beans. Like it, it was perfect. It was good. It was really good. Um, I also want to give a shout out for Topolino's for serving an old fashioned. <laughs> Breakfast? for breakfast <laughs> because even i i mean <laughs> listen, never had an old-fashioned breakfast if okay. you're starting your day in disney at a character breakfast you need a drink because you you need to prepare for a day of dealing with cranky children yeah. and you're on vacation yeah 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 so anyway we highly Drinks recommend for breakfast this. are okay on vacation or Tuesday. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. We talked about this last week that like, because when you weren't there last week and Lori and I are like, well, now that you can see us because we're videoing our podcasts, you can see that Lori and I are drinking our coffee because for us, it's 930 in the morning, it's evening for, for but me. for little Miss France over there, it's um, five o'clock somewhere it's five o'clock and somewhere. by somewhere we mean France well 9 30 in the morning it is not because that would only be 3 30 for me it's noon six it is me. noon today it happens today to it's today. noon no well, yeah but we change our time we're all yes. over the place but anyway so that's the breakfast cocktail so we are properly lubricated as they say to now discuss the battle of the breakfast which I don't yes. think cocktails are going to factor into our 
maybe they will. Let's see. Let's get into it and find Let's out. Let's get into it. Let's get Let's into it. it All right. So number one, battle royale numero uno. So should I we think... explain how we're doing it? Like a bracket? Yeah. Like Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you would. Okay, oh, fine. Sorry. <laughs> It's not really like a bracket where you have stuff on either side. We're just doing a more linear bracket where we're just yes. putting two against each other and then it's winner take winner winner takes the all. There's a word for that. So you uh, gamblers or sports, whatever, you let us know. But it's like it's like a yeah, I don't know. It's not like a playoff though. It's more like a like a golf thing. A I tournament. Don't... Yeah, I get I, I don't know. Anyway. Someone tell us, let us know on the what is this Facebook page what it is when like it's like a one-off. Maybe that's it, a one-off. I don't know. A one-off. But that's what we're doing. So we're putting two against each other. Winner goes against the next one. Winner goes the next one. And we just random, well, maybe not so randomly chose the order. We did um, have I a guess. discussion prior to. Yeah. There I is guess some a, planning that goes behind these podcasts, I don't believe it or not. About. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but, but I guess in a real tournament, in order to be the second seed, you would have to, or the higher seed, you would have to have one. So are something. we misrepresenting ourselves here? This is, this is such a riveting conversation. About this is a Mouska Moms tournament. All right. That I'm rebranding it. We, we make, make the, the rules. rules. All right. So number one. Yes. So number one, we decided to start with the most iconic breakfast. When you think of going to Disney, you think of your character breakfast. And when I think of character breakfast, the first one that comes to mind is Chef Mickey, because that's where you can see your Fab Five. Wildly popular. Wildly popular. But this one is going to go up against the less popular. Less off popular, the beaten, but also Fab Five. Also Fab Five sometimes. No? Tusker House. Sometimes. Oh, so, you're, I was thinking, yeah, I was, no, Tusker House. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's Fab Donald's Five. Breakfast it's Safari. always Donald's. So Donald is always there because it's, I think the sub name heading title is like Donald's whatever, Safari Dining Breakfast. Safari, yeah. yeah. So he's always there. Mickey and Minnie are usually there. And then it kind of depends who else. Who the other one is. So you get four. So it's not always the Fab Five. So for our listeners that that may not know, Tusker House. So Chef Mickey is in the Contemporary Resort, which is a hop, skip, and a jump from Magic Kingdom. Super easy to get to your Magic Kingdom day from there. And uh, Tusker House is in Animal Kingdom, in the park. In the park. Uh, So, and we just told you which characters you can see um so the food is similar yes so all I feel like all of these character breakfasts have the same almost staples almost um, all yes have the same staples you'll you'll be able to get your like Mickey waffle and your eggs and your breakfast meat and all that kind of stuff but then there are little differences as kind of like a nod to your location I do have to say the one thing that gives chef make the there are a couple of things that gives chef Mickey like the edge here um one of them is the location because you don't need to have a park reservation that day or park ticket to be able to go there so that's kind of cool um how are we going to do this if we don't agree we don't have a tie break oh I'll be the tie breaker oh is that right (laughs) but Tusker House actually is my vote here are we voting well we have to pick a winner Yeah, Tusker House is my vote, and here's why. Yes, you can get those staples like the Mickey waffle and everything, but they also have really cool, interesting things on the menu because you're in Africa and you have things that are going to be similar to stuff that you can get at Boma, which is in the African Africa. um, Help me out here, Animal Kingdom Lodge. so I like that one. All right. So you've already given your winner. I'm actually going to give Tusker House the edge on a lot of the categories here. Food, I agree. I'm going to give it the edge on atmosphere. Um, I am not a huge fan of Chef Mickey's. I'm not either. Like, it's great for little kids. It's great if you're staying in contemporary. It's great for a day at Magic Kingdom, like you said. It's but great it's for loud. a non-park day. It's great for a non-park day. It's also great for a park day. It's a great... Yes. It's a great restaurant I don't love the food it's more basic um the characters are awesome hands down characters are going to be awesome no matter which venue 
characters are awesome anywhere. Yeah. That's their job. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just, it's a little loud because it's kind of in the atrium of contemporary, which some people love because the monorails are going by and all that. And it's really cool. And it's so a fun, we... lively atmosphere, but you were talking about location. I'm actually going to give Tusker house the edge on location, because if you're doing breakfast, you can get a pre-park opening breakfast. Yes. And now you're in Animal Kingdom before everybody else. So let's say the park opens at nine, you get your breakfast reservation at eight, if that's possible anymore. Let's just talk in normal times. You finish your breakfast by 8.55. You're in the back of the park when people are just coming in through the gates. So you've got an edge, you can get- And you're there at the quicker. best time of day for the safari because the, yes. the animals are all out. I, yes, the most active I agree. In the morning. I'm a big fan so, of Tusker House. Yeah, I, I really actually, like I recommend this one a lot, less for breakfast, to be honest with you, and more for lunch. But given the conversation we just had, I think I will start recommending it for breakfast more. Yeah, it's good food. It's good for your picky eaters because they always are going to have those staples, but it's also good for somebody who wants to be a little adventurous. So I like it for the food. Yeah. I do like it for the location. I think that um, the locations outside of the theme parks are, are great too, because again, like if you're looking for something to do on your park, right. your non-park days, right. Right, because a lot of people fun. don't want to get up extra early for an in-park breakfast. I mean, right. I think it's a great tip, but you might not want, that might not be your bag and that's yeah. great. Or maybe you want to do your table service for lunch that day to get a break. So that's, I get it. There's all kinds of ways to do it, but. But I think for the purpose of our discussion today and this conversation, I think we have a winner of battle one, right? I think it is unanimous among the you... two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Tusker House is the winner. Oh, I'm so relieved. Gosh. I really didn't want to have to fight with you in I front really of all didn't of our want fans. To fight. Yeah, now they can see us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't roll my eyes anymore. Uh, you can, but you know, we we'll all know. <laughs> well, you probably knew when I was anyway, because if it's here and yeah. here, it's here too. Yeah, like I don't true. hold any punches, as true. you know. It's all true. right. So battle number two, Jen. All right. Now we've so, got so we've got Tusker House versus versus Ohana. So, so this again, thing is tricky. again, we have two, um, two breakfasts, one in a park and one out of a park. So Ohana mm -hmm. is the one that's located at the Polynesian. Again, really convenient for your Magic Kingdom day or really for your Epcot day too. Because mm -hmm. um, Polly's right on the monorail, so... So convenient for that. Love the Polynesian. So it gets you to that resort. It's got the great atmosphere. Really the only, one of the only places where you can st see Stitch and, and one of the only places where you can see Lilo. So I think the only place where you can see she Lilo. She sometimes makes an appearance with Stitch at uh, Typhoon Lagoon, one of those. Uh, well, nobody goes there. So... <laughs> Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right. if, you're so, if you're a fan of Lilo and Stitch it's certainly the only dining where you're going to you find guarantee that you see those characters no question this is the one that's going to win in that this battle royale right um if characters if it's not an issue for you and we're just going based on atmosphere food that's tough can I give a side note on that though? Please. I feel like characters are one of the only reasons to book these restaurants. Like it's breakfast. I think so too. I think again, Tusker House, I, I like the food genuinely. So what, like, what's different? So what's different? Oh, I have an itch in my ear. I'm sorry. See, this is the problem with being on camera. Anyone else have issues with headphones making your ears itchy? Just me? All right, well, whatever. So... <laughs> It's in the poly, right? So it's Polynesian themed. What is different about their food? Because I know at Kona, you can get this like chocolate, pineapple, coconut coated bacon. And their Tonga toast. But I don't think, did, did, they don't no, say Tonga so toast. They have, they have a special like pineapple, coconut bread. Which they serve at all meals. At, which at, they serve at all meals at Ohana. <laughs> it, it's good. And they have their pog juice. But let me tell you something. You can get, get the pog juice at Tusker House. 
and at Topolino's. No, not Topolino's. Yeah, Topolino's. Yeah. Different yes. names, same juice. Same it's juice. It's Pod yummy. juice. What did we decide? It was passion fruit, orange, and guava. I think that's what we said. Was that it, confirmed by our server? I think the Topolino's? server confirmed that. She did but... confirm that it was the same as Pod juice. Yes. And it's really good. You all know I don't like sweet Delicious. drinks. It's good. I did dilute it with some water. Um, but it's really quite yeah. nasty. Non-alcohol. Kids can have it too. But it's other really than good. that, the food is, I think you get stitch waffles and not Mickey waffles. Oh, that's kind of fun. It's cute. And you get, but you, but still, like, it's not a buffet. So let's, so Tusker House, Chef well, Mickey's, those right now buffets. nothing is a buffet. Right now nothing is. But, but let's, let's pretend, pretend we're in normal times, right? And because right now like, is not open, so. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Touche. But Touché. yeah, so let's, because things but will be in normal, normal times. This mm-hmm. one's not a buffet. It's family style. They bring out this enormous I do skillet, love family style. Full of food and you can just keep refilling it, but it's nothing special. It's your breakfast meats, your, your scrambled eggs and your mm-hmm. stitch waffles. Which is very different from Ohana's dinner, right? Like Ohana's yes. dinner is special. It is. Those wings. My kids still ask for those wings, but we're not talking about dinner. We're talking about breakfast. So yeah, I have I still a winner think in my the mind. The edge goes to Tusker. I think you're right. I agree. I agree. Don't get me Just... wrong. It's it's close. People love Ohana breakfast, and yeah. it's a lot of people who really love Lilo and Stitch. I think yes. this that's the I reason so you're going to choose Ohana. Uh, or if you're not we... going to Animal Kingdom, you're not going to choose Tusker if you're not going to Animal Kingdom. But right. all things being equal, we're on a roll. I think it's Tusker. I think it's Tusker too. Still I'm Tusker. with you. Look at us. We still don't have to kill each other. Oh, Fight to the death. So All right, battle three. So we have Tusker moving on to round three. And round three, we have Tusker, which is in the Animal Kingdom, versus the Crystal Palace, which is in the Magic Kingdom. Okay. So let's talk character. I already have a winner. <laughs> Me too, but let's save it. Let's save yeah. it. Save yep. the character and just go through it. Characters yep. at Tusker we talked about are the fab five minus one, depending, right? Yep. No guarantees on anyone other than Donald and Daisy, right? Daisy's almost Daisy's always there. Daisy's almost always there, yeah. Uh, Crystal Palace is the only character meal where you're going to get Pooh and Tigger. All of those hundred acre woods. And Piglet. And they're great. Super pretty inside. It's a beautiful event. Yes. Tusker House is very dark. Building. Yep. Tusker House is very dark, very like the thatched roofs, the dark floors. It's very dark in there. So your pictures are dark. You have to do some Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Um, Crystal right, Palace. No matter what, a digital camera is not good in the dark. A phone, yes. they just don't. You need, you need like the, the remember the flash cubes? Because yes. you and I are old. Oh, yeah. We're old. We're old. Flash cubes. Anyway. Um, Crystal Palace is the complete opposite because it's you very do bright. have all those windows. It's like a it's really house. Pretty. It's very pretty. So you're, I can remember. Yeah, I can remember as a kid, because I've said this before, having lived in the Tampa Clearwater area, we would just go for the day to Disney and Crystal Palace, and we didn't, so you didn't do table services, like it was just a day. Crystal Palace was the one that I would walk by and be like, someday I'm going to eat there. Someday, someday I'll get there. (laughs) Someday. And I have since as a grown up. And again, um, so when we're talking about food for this one, it, much like Ohana, it's nothing special. It's in typical times, it's a buffet. Um, so, and you still, you know, you get your, I think they have an omelet station in the typical times. So that's fancy. And, you know, you can get your yogurt I do love an omelet station. And, I do love an omelet station. That's, um, um, yeah. And your Mickey waffles and your breakfast meats and your scrambled eggs and the I'm usuals. getting hungry. I am too starving. <laughs> it's a bad can day. Can we back up for one snack. second though to Ohana? I wonder if if you were eating breakfast at Ohana, if you could be like, so can you just run over to Kona and get me some of that Tonga candy toast. bacon? Mm. I, don't I haven't know. ever had it. I've had the Tonga toast. It's good. But I've seen a picture of this bacon that's coated in chocolate and pineapple and coconut. Sounds gross, but no, it looks it does amazing. Not. It, it looks sounds amazing. delicious. If you've never had candy bacon, like I've had, I've made candy bacon with maple syrup and it's 
surprisingly fantastic. But this chocolate bacon sounds like it's I just made a dinner reservation for my upcoming trip for Kona for dinner I might just I might have to maybe swap it for breakfast maybe I'll have to do both because I hear the dinner is bad but I am wondering I do wonder if anyone knows let us know if you because a lot of times like if there's something on the menu nobody likes I think that will do it I think that's a stretch (laughs) did you just run over (laughs) Can I get some of that bacon from Kona? Or you know what? Just make a reservation at Kona. <laughs> Just make that done. <laughs> for breakfast. All right. We, I'm going to do need that a next winner. Time. We need a winner I think for round that we three. Prob- oh, but can we talk about location real quick? Yes. This one's a good one if you want to get into Magic Kingdom before park opens. So it, I will agree to you with I you. know what you're going to say, and I agree with it too. <laughs> Go ahead. You say psychic. I agree with you once upon a time, but now they're allowing people in early on Main Street. This does not get you beyond Main Street. And this restaurant, exactly. This restaurant's location in the park is not be our guest in fantasy. It gets you in earlier in that it gives you the kick of the pants in the pants that you might need to wake up and get your butt over there for a reservation. And if you have an 8 a.m. breakfast reservation, they'll let you in the park at 7.30 so you can get that picture in front of Cinderella Castle with nobody else there. But you're not going to get an advantage beyond that. Even Cinderella's Royal Table gives you more of an advantage than Crystal Palace because it's it's far it's in the hub okay so our winner I think it's obvious I I, I don't know what are we talking about here I don't know what you're gonna say right Tusker versus Crystal Palace Tusker versus Crystal Palace let's say Tusker okay good (gasps) I was nervous (laughs) because of your like emotions about Crystal Palace I'm like is she gonna say that I don't love Crystal Palace but I do love Winnie the Pooh it's very pretty but you can meet Winnie the Pooh outside the ride. He's there a lot. Yes. Yeah. Back, you know, in normal times. Agreed. And he's also a lot of the time at, um, where have I seen him lately? Epcot. Am I making that up? Really? I've seen him a lot unless I'm in the wrong country. Flower and Garden him. in Epcot. Oh, yeah. He's usually catching butterflies. I've seen Winnie the Pooh characters in the hub on Main Street as well. Or am I making that up? Is that only in DLP? That might only be in DLP. I don't know. I think that's in Paris. I don't know. But you, who love Flower and Garden, isn't that cute? He's catching butterflies with a net. I love him. Yeah. Yeah, that's adorable, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So, All right, winner, so winner, it. chicken dinner. Battle Oscar four. has survived two wow. rounds. Four. We're on four. Yeah, but he was, He. when did we bring him in? First. No. Yes. <gasps> Chef Mickey, Ohana, Crystal Palace, Ooh, and now Battle too. 4. We're I even know. surprising ourselves. Okay. I know. Look at us. I wonder if it would have been different if Lori was here. We'll I never know. I thought, uh, well, we'll have to, we'll have <laughs> we'll to call her. We'll never know. We'll yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to ask her. All right. All right so Battle so. 4, Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. Tusker versus Hollywood and Vine. So Hollywood and Vine is in um, Hollywood Studios. One, yeah. Hollywood Studios. <laughs> uh, the atmosphere is dinerish. Would you say the restaurant looks like a diner? Super cute booths, booths. right? Uh, you don't you don't have that issue with it being dark in there? No um it's it's they changed this one it's usually it you, way back in the day it was the only place where you could see disney junior characters right it was like vampirina for a while handy and... manny going way back right right <laughs> um now it's usually Minnie mouse and friends which it's is usually it's it's a, a little bit of a bummer because I had clients specifically ask, where can I meet Vampirina? Where can yes. I meet? Give me some of the other ones. Yeah, you can still, it's um, Doc McStuffin. That's the one, Doc McStuffin. Sophia the First, was she there? She was there for a long time. Um, I mean, back in the day, JoJo's Circus. I mean, I don't think you even had no, kids No, I didn't back have kids then. for JoJo's Circus. Uh-uh. Um, yeah, so it's, it's from its opening day until recent years and I'm talking like maybe the last year 
It I was. I wonder if they'll bring back the Gin- Disney Junior. I don't to know. Hollywood and so they they made they revamped their whole area back by Disney Junior sing along. That's true. That now they have permanent places yes. for all those characters yes. to be. And there's the dance party. And there's the dance party where you can see them making the roadster racers and all that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I like that Minnie is there. I think she has a broader <clears throat> appeal. What's it called now? The Hollywood stu- the Hollywood and Vine Minnie's Minnie's breakfast. seasonal something. Yeah. So it, yeah, Minnie and it friends. Because it used to just... change like for the holidays. Mm-hmm. It would be Minnie and Mickey all it dressed does. It up changes. for Christmas. Yeah. The title of the, the meal changes. So you're yeah. guaranteed Minnie. You're guaranteed Minnie and usually Mickey. And I don't really know the other characters. I think they they probably switch them out as well, but it, it isn't really Disney Junior anymore. And then food wise, again, this one is a buffet and it's the traditional scrambled eggs, breakfast meats, Mickey right, waffles, there's no special theme pancakes. to Hollywood and Vine. I mean, maybe they'll put an avocado on the buffet for California. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making that up. <laughs> but yeah, it's standard. It's very standard. Uh, but it's fun, right? Don't they do like uh, like like activities there or no? Is there like a con um, line? Am I making that up? No, I don't think so. I'm it up. I don't think so. Like way back in the day when my oldest were little, they used to do like stuff, but I don't think they do it anymore. They do at Tusker House though. This is a good, this is a good reminder. Tusker House, they do a little parade because I remember Lily, that was like our first ever character meal with her and she loved it. But I don't think they do that in Hollywood and Vine. And I'm wondering if there are going to be changes continued changes moving right. on right who knows um but let's vote i think um i think we're still with Tusker. i think tusker is moving shocked. on to round five i, I am this is crazy i'm shocked ish i'm shocked ish i think tusker is really a i think it's gem. really underrated yeah. yeah i think it's delish all right so all on right. to battle five this battle is crazy five. all right so so Tusker versus 1900 Park. So 1900 Park Fair is the restaurant in the Grand Floridian. And the characters at breakfast are fabulous. They really are. <laughs> They're so fabulous. This is going to be hard. Okay, so we've got Mary Poppins, yes. Alice in Wonderland, yes. Mad Hatter, yes. Tigger and Winnie the Pooh. So you're hitting a bunch. I will also say that at dinner, it's it's <gasps> Cinderella and Prince Charming, Prince Charming and the sisters and Lady Tremaine. But we're not at dinner. It's different at breakfast. It's these characters at breakfast, which is a combo you're not going to get anywhere else. The Again, food, the food. I'm it's really a little more upscale breakfast, right? You can get eggs benedict and made to order omelets, right? So Locks it's fancy. And bagels. It's also, if you've ever had or ever heard about, or we should post a recipe. Their famous, their most famous thing, the reason people go to breakfast at this location oh, is yes. for I made cold this. strawberry soup. So we, we do have a recipe. I'm going to make a pin for Pinterest and I'm going to post it for us because- I'll film um, making yeah, it. I've made it before. It. Oh, do it. Okay, good. Look it's at delicious. us. Look at us. Wheels, wheels are turning. Yeah, great menu. Um, the strawberry soup is really delicious. The strawberry soup, even and, though and you again, think so. you know, and this, this is not a buffet. Is it not? It's a buffet for dinner, for well, sure. Maybe it is a buffet. Well, I think I it's a buffet for breakfast. Me. It is. It is. But, but they also have corned beef hash, which I haven't seen other places. Yeah. I like corned beef. It's a little, so it's again, a it's standard buffet. American breakfast. It's right. Floridian breakfast, but it's, it's, a, it's, they've got blintzes and the strawberry soup. You're at the Grand Floridian. I got to kick it up it's, a notch. It's kicked up a notch. So it might not be ethnic like Tusker. There might not be ethnic options, but there are Grand Floridian options. Are you ready Location. to vote? 
No, not yet. Location. Okay. This doesn't get you at I'm a park, so but it gets no. you on the monorail. Yes. Another winner, winner for your Magic Kingdom day or, you know, or a non park pop, day or non park day or Epcot. Or sort Epcot. Of. It's not that fantastic for Epcot because you have no. to go to the TTC and then switch monorails. So it does take a, a little while. Or Uber. <laughs> or Uber. I'm stuck. I'm not. I know. All right. Should we say it on three? Yeah. One, One two, two, three. three. 1900. 1900. Yay! <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm actually surprised I chose this too. But I think because the food's a step up from basic and, and characters. the characters, you can't, you can't. I think I want to be there now. That. I want to be there now. This is another one that hasn't opened back up yet. It shall, it will, it will. It will. Yeah, I love it. I mean, the Mad Hatter, I don't even know I where know. else you can meet the Mad Hatter. Sometimes in front of the teacups with Alice. Right, right. I've Yeah. yeah. But again, the cool thing about this is you don't have to wait in line. Well, that's just it, right? That's what I started to say earlier is one of the biggest reasons for booking these table service meals is a guaranteed interaction with the characters, right? You get, you're not just seeing them run by. You, they come to your table in normal times and they, you know, take pictures. But even in chat. abnormal times, because we've done character dining since the parks have opened. They do stop it, by. It still feels um, intimate. Well, they definitely, <laughs> yes, they definitely stop at every table, yes. albeit a few feet back and make but you feel still, special and do their little. Yeah, and, and we still got that. pictures of us with the characters. I mean, granted, we're not hugging them like we would. Normal that's okay either. but it was you should yeah. hunch i'm glad we have the same one yay this is crazy so all right good, yay for tusker house definitely yay for tusker. lasted five rounds five rounds well done but now well, going yeah. into Round into six. battle six we have the new winner 1900 park um battling storybook dining which is in Akershus in the norway pavilion in epcot So, so like Jen said, it's in, it's in Epcot. Why I thought, why in my head was I thinking Germany, but you're right. It's in Norway. Norway. Frozen. Um, let's start with the food. It's the typical stuff. Plus. Plus they have the Norwegian smorgasbord. So they have all the smoked fishes and, um, you know, a European breakfast basically with like the cheeses and the meats. I mean, I'll be honest, meh, on the food. <laughs> I don't really typically eat smoked fish for breakfast. I do eat lox. That's, so I'm lying. It's a Jewish thing. I do like lox. We like I'm not going to eat like a herring pate for breakfast. Yes, yeah, see, I would. I'll eat it for lunch. I'm no, I think, I, mm, let's see, I'm nervous now. Uh, the characters are the princesses. Like, like all of them. Like all of them. This is a great option for people who want to go to Cinderella's castle, but don't want that price point because this one is cheaper. This um, one, if you were on a deck, so Cinderella's Royal Table on the dining plan is two credits. This one's only one. Right. And if you're not on the dining credit, cr dining plan, the credits correspond to money too. So it's, it's significantly It's a cheaper. signature dining experience. And the atmosphere is pretty fantastic. Like it's a, it's like a big, it's a big like it's royal hall. You it's still, really cool. You still feel like you're in a castle. It positions you right next to Elsa and Anna. So Elsa and Anna do not make an appearance at the breakfast but they are, they have like their character meet and greet spots right, right outside. So and again, you and do their a attraction pre, is there. You do a pre-park opening breakfast. You beat the crowds because it's in the world showcase. And yes. most people are entering in future worlds, right? Yes. Very few people are, well, although now with the Skyliner, but even still very few people are entering Epcot through the international gateway. And even if they are, it's a long way to Norway from there. A long way um, to Norway. <laughs> it's a long way to, and really, it's like that's true. A song title. All the time. Yes, it's a long way to Norway. Time. Norway's on my bucket list, by the way, before we get, before we leave where we are. But um, so you get to run right out and you can do the ride and meet the characters and boom, boom, boom. You've, you've beat the crowd. 
And then oh. in, in the restaurant itself, like if you have a princess fan, boy, a little boy, a little girl, whatever, it's all the princesses. It's all of them. It really all is. They do, they do switch it up a little. So, but it's, I mean, I know the last time we were there, um, Belle was out in the front greeting everyone. So you got your picture. And Belle is not at Cinderella's Royal table. No. Um, and then she, inside, I, I don't no, think I don't so. think I she is because she's, she's outside. No, I don't think she is. I have yeah. to go through my pictures. So, and then inside the actual she's restaurant, not. you have. She's not because you meet her at the Enchanted Tales. Yeah. Inside Opera Shoes, storybook dining, you have um, Rapunzel's usually there, Snow White, who's my girl. Um, I love Rapunzel. Cinderella's usually there, Aurora's usually there. I've seen Monday. Jasmine there. Right. All of those, all of those are at Cinderella's Royal yeah, Table too. It's, it's but except like for way Belle. cheaper. <laughs> but way cheaper. So I'm again, still... this one has the typical eggs, breakfast meats, pancakes, Mickey waffles, all that kind of stuff. Plus also, the smorgasbord. The smorgasbord. All right. So we're doing so it's this one versus 1900 Park Fair. Oh my God. I struggle because what it oh, this is a hard one, but I think I know. I got I got mine. I think we might disagree. Should we do it on three? Okay. One, two. Three. Wait, can I say one more thing? <laughs> ah. Um I don't like the idea of a big breakfast at Epcot. Oh, I know. We changed our entire schedule that day. <laughs> you do know this about me. Because I do the know this food about at you. Epcot, like I want to, I want to eat my way around. But Epcot. let's pretend that's not a factor. This we are we are going in on the assumption that we are just judging the restaurants, and it is Why? not a factor about Why? having room in your belly for later dining. Why? Because I make the rules. <laughs> I don't know. But also, so like. Here's my other thing. She's got another thing. If, if you're choosing between this one and Cinderella's Royal Table, that's a different scenario. But we're choosing between this one and 1900 Park Fair right yep. now. Mm -hmm. And I think that 1900 Park Fair has a broader appeal in terms of characters. I think you're thinking I'm going to say something that I'm not going to be saying. All right, then fine. One, two, three, 1900. 1900. Yes. <laughs> And that's, those are my reasons because like, like I just said, like, I think 1900 characters have a broader appeal. I think the food is a wash. For the record, all those items that are on that smorgasbord for breakfast at Norway are also on a smorgasbord for dinner at Norway. In the same place? In Norway, yeah. So in Norway, the way they do dinner is you order your entree and your mm -hmm. dessert off the main menu. And then they have like a salad bar that everybody gets as an appetizer. Mm -hmm. And it's that Norwegian smorgasbord with the smoked okay. fishes and the meats and the cheese. So okay. go yeah, there for dinner. So, so I don't. Yeah. I just think 1900 can't be beat for those characters. And the food is good. And the food is good. And, you know, I think maybe Akershus has the edge in terms of location. If you have a princess fan, that's going to win. Yeah. A thousand times, yes. If you have a princess fan, Akershus is, is the best choice. But if you have a princess fan who's also a Mary Poppins fan... <laughs> Plus 1900 Park Fair is just it's so princessy anyway it like because it's in the brand beautiful yeah all yeah. right winner, so winner. winner winner I am surprised I thought that you were you did um, I knew you thought I was gonna do that thought That's you were why going I was with like, just, just look at us look at us this is why we're friends <laughs> this is like the the ultimate mask of mom's test if you can't agree on food you can't agree on anything you can't agree on it <laughs> So, all right. So, battle number that would be a great T-shirt. Seven. <laughs> battle number seven. It, that would have been interesting. Akershus I know. Well, because versus... I felt like we yes. Yeah. Because right. this next one is 
1900 because that was the winner mm-hmm. versus Cinderella's, Cinderella's Royal, Royal Table. Table. So I felt like, oh, what are we going to talk about? We've already compared Acker Shoes to Cinderella's Royal Table, but but 1900 won out anyway. So now we're, this is, this is hard again. Oh, although we did say already that Acker Shoes kind of beats Cinderella's Royal Table. I'm, well, so maybe we're, it's a we're doing 1900. Conclusion. Right. But if 1900 beat Acker Shoes. Oh yeah, right. You're right. Never mind. Ignore it's me. It's a totally different comparison. So I don't know how tournaments Cin- work. Cinderella's Royal Table is located in in Cinderella's castle in the Magic Kingdom. Which but there's no getting around that that atmosphere. There's nothing that we're going to discuss today that will be able to compete can't with that. that location. And it's so nice. Like you go, okay, so can I just tell you about it? So Please. like you go and you check in. You check in down by where the 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 gift shop is or whatever there with the boutique and 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 they make you wait and then they call you in the royal groman family and then you walk (laughs) up to the podium and you walk through the downstairs of the castle like a part where nobody can see and then cinderella's there and she has her moment with you and your family and she tells your kids their princess dresses are dance costumes (laughs) But I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a great idea to use old I, dance costumes as genius, princess dresses. But genius. that that Cinderella called me out. I didn't like like that. Come anyway, on, so they have their moment. They're like all excited, and then you ascend the royal staircase like, up. It's a spiral it's, staircase, uh, right? Well, I mean, like oh yeah, a along the wall of right. the tower, right? right. And Gus and what's the other one's name? Are like in the rafters and got to notice them. And it's just so like, it's really special. It's magical. It's really special. You're a princess. And then you sit down at your table and this one is table service, right? It's a, it's a fixed price, but you order what you want to eat and you can get a drink. One of the only places in Magic Kingdom where you can get a cocktail. Mm-hmm. Uh, not many to choose from. I think it's just like a mimosa or a mimosa. And um and you get your food and the food's all right it's all right it's pretty but this room that you're in also like the ceilings are so high and there are beautiful rafters and the the windows are just like all stained glass right yeah it's a castle it's it's a castle it's It's this medieval castle that you're in it's the only time you're ever going to be in there right there is no access to cinderella's castle unless you are at cinderella's royal table and it's worth the price of admission. It's magic. Yeah. It's magic. The princesses rotate. The only staple there is Cinderella, obviously, but she but does she's not, not come a... around the tables. Nope. She, you see her. She is she greeting her guests at right. the at downstairs, like Julian And then was you saying. go up. Yeah. And then you go upstairs and they rotate who's there. But again, usually it's like four or five princesses who are coming around. And, and, and they it. used to, I don't know if they still do this. They used to give every kid a magic wand that lights up and they turn out the lights and they do yes. like, you do like a bibbity bobbity boo. And it's just so, it, it, it's pretty magical. Yeah. And the menu, so it's price fixed um, and it's fancy breakfast so there it's are it's just like there's steak and a, eggs there's a basket of pastries on the table that are delicious but there's things like beef tenderloin quiche caramel stuff french toast shrimp and grits pretty good um, it's pretty good it's fancy yeah it's good um, uh yeah it's good it's tasty and this, Ooh, this is also hard. is the one that's going to get you for an early morning pre-park opening breakfast it's going to get you pretty much into Past fantasy land right. yeah you're like you're right there you're not you, you allowed get out of there and you that, can right yeah. you can run to seven doors you're train. not allowed to go that far unless you have one of these dining reservations otherwise they stop you at the castle and right unlike you wait unlike crystal palace that we talked about before jen this is hard it's not hard for me i have a winner i might have to defer to you because as much as I raved about 1900 Park Fair, I think I'm going with Cinderella's Royal Table here. Do we disagree? We disagree. <gasps> I can be convinced. Convince me. <laughs> Convince me. Because I, I think it's worth the price. It is very expensive. I think that, I think, I guess it's a one and done. 
It's a one and done for a hundred percent, a one and done. But I don't feel like my life would not be fulfilled if I never did it. <laughs> I would not, I would not do it if I were on the dining plan. I would not, but, I would rather see, pay cash for this than two table service credits. And we did it, we've done it several times because we often bring friends with us when we go. And if our friends have never been there, that's usually one of the things on their bucket list. So we've been to it more than once. And I'm never excited about it. I would not do it, it more than once. I'm I would never not do it more than once. I would it. actually be bitter to have to spend the money. It is a one and done. It is a one and done. Whereas, whereas the it other one, I think one I could do more than once. It is a one and done. And for me, like you're in the castle, but you could very well be anywhere else in the, like, I, who cares? You can look <laughs> at pictures. Who cares that you're in the castle? Fair I enough. Just, and like I said, I do, like if, if, I, if, if I have clients who must have a, a princess breakfast, I actually do pr- prefer Acker shoes to this I one. I do too. I always try to push that or 1900 for dinner because Cinderella's there too. The only edge I think that Cinderella's Royal Table has over 1900 is that you're in the castle. I will say while the menu is fancier, not that great. Sometimes Disney doesn't do fancy that well. Yeah, especially this kind of fancy where they they know that a lot of kids are there and it just I don't right. Know. This isn't fancy like you're going to an exclusive adult place at Disney. This is yeah. No, I see. I'm so e- I'm so malleable. Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. Like, you got me. You got um. Me. By the way. If Lori was here, a hundred percent, she'd say Cinderella's Royal Table. <laughs> I thought she loved 1900. I think she would say Cinderella's Royal Table. I'm going to text her right now. I for her. Are you texting her? Yeah, I'm going to text her right now. Stop what you're doing in Epcot and let me know. <laughs> I'm excited to hear her answer, but I feel like we should put money on it. I'm really thinking she's a, she's a Cinderella's Royal Table. Didn't she get engaged there? No. I think that's the thing for her. No. Yes, she did. No, I thought that was what she used her extra table service credits for when she, I don't think you were on that I think she got engaged. Well, she definitely got engaged in the Magic Kingdom and I think that's where they went to celebrate. Are we making up stuff about Lori's life? All right, (laughs) quick. I I think she's going to say 1900. You think she's going to say Cinderella's Royal Table. We'll see what she says. All right, moving on. <laughs> but we though. say nineteen hundred. We say nineteen hundred. But it was it was a, as you know, a hard decision for me. But I I think it was such a hard decision, and it was really hard for me to convince her to come to the other side. <laughs> it makes sense that when really for me being relatively cheap, when it's not. You're right. It is not worth not worth the, the price. money. It's not worth the price. But so nineteen hundred is a single credit for breakfast. Yeah. And priced accordingly. It's the winner. In fact, if you want to get into Magic Kingdom early for breakfast in normal times, you do be our guest. Yeah, but they don't do that anymore. Well, they in switched normal lot- times, I said, did you hear my normal times? I don't times think they're disclaimer? going back. I don't no think they're thing. going back. I think they will. Let's put money on that That's another that friendly too. wager. <laughs> All right. So now we have, this one is, this one's going to be a cool one. So battle number nine. We These have are our two of win- my favorites. Actually, we have our winner of nineteen hundred, and going up against that is the Bon Voyage breakfast, <sighs> which is on the boardwalk in Trattoria Al Forno. This one has um, usually it's Rapunzel and Flynn Rider, and Ariel and Eric. So, so again, both of these have unique characters yes right you can see Rapunzel and you can see Ariel in a lot of restaurants but Flynn and Eric this is the only place you're going to see and I like for characters that we're putting 1900 against this one because these again broader appeal for characters right typical girls and typical boys right like so I like that unlike Um, 1900 this one is not a buffet this one you order a la carte off a menu um 
kind of like uh, Cinderella's Royal Table and Topolino's, which we'll talk about later, you get, when you sit down, you get a, a basket full of pastries, which are, I could just have that and coffee and be happy. <laughs> um, but their menu is really pretty good too. Let me see. It's like right. Italian influence. So I think they have like lemon regatta pancakes, yes. right? And like- uh, Italian uh, omelet. Yeah. I have to make a confession <laughs> that I have never been to Topolino's for breakfast. No, no, no. Or to, I'm sorry, Bon Voyage bon for Voyage, breakfast. Yeah. That happens to Topolino's. I will also say though, it is so high on my list to do. I don't feel like I can make an educated decision here. I, I, I can. <laughs> but I still think I will. All right. That's not going to stop me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, but, well, let's talk location, though. Like, it's out of the way, Bon Voyage. It's not convenient to anything. It's out of, well, no. You can walk to Epcot, International Gateway. It's okay. at the boardwalk. Okay. Perfect for an Epcot day. You know, when I did this one last um, was my water park day. I went there in July. You need a water park day because it's July. Water park doesn't open till 10. I got 8.30 breakfast reservations. That's good. It was I perfect. also like this one on a departure day. Like if you have an evening yes. flight and you're not going to a park, or you have an afternoon flight, you're not going to park, it's the Bon Voyage breakfast. Like I, I, I actually, I like it for departure day. <laughs> yeah. Um, it definitely works. It works, I guess hard. it works too if you're going to Hollywood Studios because now you have the Skyliner right that's there. That's true, that's true. So I'm ready to tell you what my thought is, but it doesn't weigh that much because I've never had it. But given that I really prefer 1900 Park Fair for dinner because of the characters available at dinner, I'm going to go with Bon Voyage for breakfast. <gasps> again, we disagree again? We disagree. Well, now what do we do? I don't know. I'll tell you why I disagree. I just think that you see Ariel and Rapunzel everywhere. True, but you you can't see you, you can see, see Tigger Eric, other places. You, you see can Eric see Pooh other Flynn places. Rider on the Where? floats in the parades, and that's enough for me. But who do you see at 1900s breakfast that you can't see on the floats or nobody? Else? I just feel like interaction wise, the same reason I prefer. 1900 for dinner because I think those character interactions are the most fun because they're the most playful Mad Hatter how do you compete with his like banter and foolishness and play and then Mary Poppins at the Grand Floridian with tea on your table like I just think it's real that's a real hard one to beat okay I'm, I'm sticking to it well, like I said, since I have not been to Bon Voyage, I will, I will allow it. I will allow it. <laughs> Objection sustained. <gasps> You're going to have to give me one eventually. Well, we're getting to the end. We have our final round right now. Battle right. number 10. So 1900. So is it 1900? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. fine. 1900. I, I, I don't feel that strongly. 1900 versus... Topolino's Please. Terrace. So Topolino's Terrace is in the Riviera Resort. Uh, Atmosphere-wise, it's, it's a beautiful opinion. resort. It's, yeah, it's all right. It's it's all right. I love the view. The view is beautiful. It's a high. It's like being in a high rise yes. in in you Where? know you can see everything. It's got a panoramic view. It's kind of like California Grill in terms of atmosphere, right? It's not Disney-ish. No, but neither is really the grand. I don't think that 1900 Park is actually is, is exceptionally beautiful. I think that the, the grand, grand is beautiful. beautiful. I love though with Topolino's that it's like, well, not 360 degree windows, but you know, you're, you're surrounded by windows on three sides and you're su surrounded by this beautiful terrace you can go out on and see you know, views of Epcot and Hollywood Studios and the Caribbean Beach Resort and the Riviera. And that's really pretty. Um, but I guess you could do the same thing leaving 1900 and looking at the Seven Seas Lagoon and seeing the contemporary and the Poly Well, the Grand Floridian itself is just 
iconic. Stunning. It's stunning. I don't I see don't... the Riviera as being an iconic resort. Uh, no. It's pretty, it, but but it's not the grand. But that's okay. It's still the atmosphere is is nice. It's, it's sunny. Fancy. It's bright. It's fancy. I like um, that we're comparing the two because I feel like fancy factor. It you know grand is fancy. Mm-hmm. Riviera is fancy. It is. So let's talk characters. Yes. So here again, it's the Fab, fab five. five. But there's a twist. Their outfits. So the idea is that they're all artists of some kind. I think Daisy's a dancer, Mickey's a painter, Minnie's a photographer. I think so. They all have like a They a all shtick. have some and their outfits represent that and they're very unique. So if you are like obsessed with the Fab Five and you want to see them in every different way possible, then Tusker House is your Safari Fab Five and Chef Mickey's is your standard Fab Five and then this the chef's costumes. Be- that's true. And then this one's going to be your, your, you know, beautiful, the really cute outfits, painter or uh, artist outfits are really cute. Uh, Riviera French slash Italian inspired. Yes. Very so cute, cute. And they come around and they sing the song. So that's, it's cute. It's cute. And, and it's very, um, it's high energy yes. without being loud. And kind of, Again, similar to Bon Voyage and Cinderella's Royal Table, you start breakfast with a basket of pastries. Right. So it's a fixed price, but it's not a buffet. It's a table service. Now, I don't know if this is true of Cinderella's Royal Table, but I do know that it's true here at Topolino's. And I think at Bon Voyage, you can order six entrees if you want to. I'm not I don't sure think about that's the other two. I've never, Royal table. I've never tried at the Cinder other Royal's ones. table is a signature and I don't think that you could get away Probably. with it. Probably. But and I've never tried this at Bon Voyage. I but think we it is tried true at Bon Voyage. It. But here for sure, for your for your not cheap breakfast. You can order multiple entrees and can, they were delicious. And they it felt like the server we had encouraged it. She was yeah. like, Yeah, try sure. it. I'll bring yeah, it. Why not? Why not? You might as well try it. Yeah. Um and the food was really good. So you had like a lox and bagels, which yes. even by New York standards was quite was tasty. Good. Yeah. And I had a quiche even by French standards standards was quite tasty. So the food was good. It's the only place where you can get a mini waffle instead of a Mickey waffle. That's so she's true. it's mini with the big bow. They had those in Magic Kingdom for a short while. They don't have them anymore because that was and one of the usually. like not selling usually. factors that our server was telling us about, yeah. which was, it was very cute. So she brought that out for us. It almost looked like a push pop, the way they right, served like it. Right, it's like a block like on a, a stick. Yeah, it was cute. It was, it was cute. cute. The food was really good. And they also have like a, I think here they have a, a lemon pancake as well. A lemon regatte. Regotta uh, pancake. <laughs> Nobody, no, when I say regotta, everyone's like, what? I'm like, ricotta. I know what you're saying. I just can't say it as pretty. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> roll the I R. I'm <sighs> teasing. Like I can't know. It's, um, it yeah, was no. good though. It was delish. Um, it was good and the great cocktail. And that's where our great cocktail was. And you can Does get the 1900 pop have good po- cocktails? I've never had a cocktail there. I'm I gonna don't look know. It up. You're going to look it up. I am going to look it up. And I wonder if they have the pog juice there, because that's a big one. They definitely had it at Topolino's. It was tasty. It was really tasty. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can't pick a winner right now. Do you have one in mind? You do? I do. I do. I think now the tables are turned, Juliana Groman. Well, what do we I do? Think now you, I think now you have to declare the winner and then convince me. So ironically, even though I wasn't sure between 1900 and Topolino or and Bon Voyage, I keep wanting to call Bon Voyage Topolinos because it's Italian inspired, but it, um, I think 1900 wins. I just don't love the atmosphere at Topolinos. I love and those costumes. The costumes are great, but it's still just Mickey, Minnie, and Donald and Daisy, which I I love, but they're not my favorite. And the food was really good, but I think the food at 1900 is really good too. 
this is not where I thought this was going. Me neither. But I think I 1900 think I is the winner. I will say, I will stop it. I, <laughs> I will say that the, the location of Riviera is fantastic, especially if you're going to Epcot with Epcot opening later now, you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn for breakfast. You can do a 930 breakfast and still um, make it to Epcot by 11. Well, actually, I, I take that back. The Skyliner gets pretty bad. Yeah, but you could Uber there. there. There's ways to do it. Right, right. So, but then your belly will be full for your eating around the world. <laughs> well, we did it to Hollywood Studios, didn't we? Yes. Yep. Because purposefully. Same story. Same yeah. story, though, right? Like, yeah. not in terms of your belly being full because the food at Hollywood Studios is meant, but but in terms of transportation, yes. right? You still need a good hour to get to especially park. in COVID times when there's limited capacity on, right. on the transportation. Yeah. Right. So I'm really yeah. surprised. This is not where I, I would have pictured this conversation ending. But I agree. It, that, this was an interesting exercise. I agree. It is interesting. Isn't it funny? You would have think you would think that we had it all figured out, but uh, that's very funny to me. Yeah. I wonder if it would have been different if Lori had been here, but I think we're all kind of on the same page. I, she never did get back to I'm me. I'm happy with this text. decision. Winner, winner. 1900 we'll to, Park. We'll have to post it on the Facebook page, what she said about Cinderella's Royal Table versus 1900. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so so that's really, really interesting. Okay, so the winner for Bre Battle of the Breakfast, I am shocked, is... is uh, 1900. Thank you. Oh, my Ooh. stars. Two sips of wine, people. Two sips. All right. So I think we're going to have to do another breakfast episode of non character breakfasts. And then maybe we'll pit that winner against 1900. Maybe. There are so many factors, right? Like, yeah. Is it a park day? Is it a not park day? Because right. I don't know that I would do 1900 if I was going to a park, right? Yeah. Like, so there's a lot, but, but just but, based on those three things that we talked about, the atmosphere, the food, the characters, I think it's a, I think it's a winner. I think sure. we won. Okay. So are we ready for our mouse? Kitchen? I think so. I think so. Let's go. All right. So no matter where you choose for breakfast, you have to be sure to book an advanced dining reservation. So Even in normal now, times, it's, especially it's now. 180 days out, but now it's 60 days out. Uh, and especially if you want Cinderella's Royal Table or, you know, any of these hard to get ones, Park Fair can be very hard to get. So Topolino's any of those- Topolino's is real hard to get now. Topolino's too. is incredibly hard to get. Um, you know, eat your big breakfast early before the parks open, snack for lunch, then do a quick service dinner, helps you maximize your park day, leaves you time for unplanned time during, during park hours and gives you flexibility. So we, I do like the idea of a big breakfast, except for Epcot. Don't do that. Um, yeah. And then, and then snack for lunch, quick service dinner, and, and you're good to go for the day and you've maximized your time, but always be sure to make that advanced dining reservation or you will be out of luck. And you know what though? Bonus tip. If you don't get what you're looking for, for breakfast, keep checking because we've said it before, people change their minds, things open up, just keep checking, especially two days before, one day before when people really stop dropping off, start dropping off their reservations to avoid the cancellation penalty. That's it. Good tip. Good tip. I'm full of them. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. You have squandered another perfectly good evening chatting with us. And for that, we always thank you. Be sure to tune in next week. Uh, same mask of time, same mask of place for more of our quirky antics. Hopefully there will be three of us then and not two. It's always and more fun with three of us. It's always more fun with three, but I understand that she's living the dream in Florida, <laughs> whatever. As always, for more of the latest Disney news, be sure that you're following along on our Facebook group, Disney Planning and Chat by Mask Moms, and our blog, maskamomswithans.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.